The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Botest.com, and today we're going to conduct a features inspection and sea trial of the 37ST from Axopar. This boat is built in Poland where cruising definitely takes a precedence over fishing. The result is that she's designed to be a versatile day boat for entertaining, alfresco dining, sunning, and general water sports. Because she has a cabin below, she can also be used as a weekender. The Axopar 37ST is a center console, but don't make the mistake of comparing her to traditional American center consoles, which are usually designed for fishing with some family features added on. The Axopar 37 is just the reverse. She was designed for family fun and has some rod holders added on. And there are lots of other differences as well, most notably her hatchet bow. She's wedge shaped with her max beam of 10 feet 10 inches at the stern. And at 7,912 pounds dry, without engines, she's about 40% lighter than the best center console, so we're talking apples and oranges here. ST stands for sun top, and that feature adds protection to the entire center of the boat. It includes a sliding sunroof that opens manually, but an electrically actuated one comes with the Bravis Line Series upgrade. The underside is fully upholstered and includes LED lighting. Beefy supports that double as ladders leave 18 inches of side deck space. Use caution at the forward end as it tops out at 5 feet 8 inches above the deck. Underneath the hardtop and down a 4 inch step is the seating area. I'd like to see a grab handle under the overhead. Inside, four seats line the aft section of the space. Armrests are to the outboard side of the two end seats. Plush upholstery has double stitch diamond quilting. Underneath is storage and the main battery switches. Ahead is an expandable solid wood table. The three seats at the helm can swivel around to create an elegant alfresco dining venue. The table is on adjustable pedestals so we can lower it and add a filler cushion. With the sunroof open there's a protected place to take in some rays while underway. A deck hatch has pedestal bases to support the lowered table and those pedestals store right inside the compartment. The 37 is also available with an enclosed cabin adding functionality and versatility for use in any climate zone. To the sides, the bulwarks come up 22 inches and the rails top out at 27 inches. The helm station is down a 6 inch and 13 inch step, and that makes for a high console. A flip down step or platform would be nice. At the top of the console is a compass in line with the wheel. Two 12 inch garment displays are flanking a 7 inch Smartcraft display. Just below is a remarkably convenient cubby running the length of the panel. It's self draining and includes connectivity plugs at the end. Beverage holders are to port, but they're small so a typical water bottle won't fit. Electrical switches are in a conveniently located cluster. Another set of beverage holders are to starboard. Back to the left is a Fusion stereo. The wheel is mounted to a tilt base. The DTS control binnacle is mounted at a nearly vertical angle. The bow thruster control is right over a joystick for the trim tabs, and that's the most convenient tab controller we've seen. Further to the right is the VHF the ignitions, and the VHF remote speaker. Below are storage pockets and a long rail serving as a footrest, and that allowed me to get a little higher while leaning against the flip-up bolster. That puts the top of the windshield frame just above my line of sight. The seats continue with the quality we just saw behind. Quality upholstery and stitch work complement the flip armrests and bolsters. A hatch provides access to the 192-gallon fuel tank, fuel lines, and vents. Forward visibility is excellent through a 29 inch high single piece windshield. It wraps around to the sides and ends in a convenient grab handle and to the sides midship cleats are easily accessible. To the stern there is open deck space. Deck drains lead directly overboard. Hatches in the deck open to expose cavernous storage compartments measuring 21 inches by 41 inches with an under deck extension that runs 81 inches ahead. The lines and fenders are supplied with the boat. To the sides are two more storage compartments, and one or both can be insulated. The one to port also has a CE-required manual bilge pump. Just ahead is a refreshment center. Overhead is the hardtop extension only 5 feet 7 inches off the deck, but rather than just have everyone exercise caution, Exopar made it hinged. With the Brabus trim line, the overhead is a full 6 feet 5 inches off the deck, and that's actually how most of these are being ordered. The top of this optional entertainment bar is covered in S-Tech non-skid, and it can be added for all the decking as well. Underneath is prep space, a sink, more counter space that can accommodate an electric grill. Below is storage to both sides of a refrigerator. 
To the size of this console, there's still 20 inches of walk space. The standard version of the 37 ST comes with a large open cockpit and a rear cabin that sleeps two people as an option. At the aft end, there are angled staple rails that can be reversed to provide either more cockpit space or room to tilt the engines out of the water. Further aft, there's a swim platform that comes out 3 feet 2 inches, covered in more of the S-Tech non-skid, that continues across a service deck ahead of the engines to a second platform. The cabin is accessed from a door to the port side of the helm. Inside is a brightly lit cabin populated with sitting and sleeping areas. The berth measures 78 inches fore and aft and 61 inches wide at the head, which is aft, and 41 inches wide at the foot. Just behind it, the starboard is a convenient settee. The bow thruster breaker is just below. Opposite is a sink with storage beneath. Aft is a storage cabinet with padded seat alongside that lifts to reveal the head. The overhead skylight, additional windows to the side, and a forward smoked window allow plenty of natural light into this area. Max headroom is just under the skylight at 5 feet 6 inches. As we make our way forward, safety is maintained at the 13 inch wide side decks by the 23 inch high bulwarks and 28 inch high rail height. Be careful of the extended overhead at 5 feet 8 inches high. After stepping up an 8 inch step, the side deck opens up to 14 inches. Bulwarks now top out at 15 inches with the rail coming up 19 inches. Just ahead of the console is a comfortable chaise lounge style sun pad. We're seeing the same quality of materials for the upholstery, along with the double-stitched diamond pattern quilting from the interior seating. Fixed armrests are to both sides with beverage holders just outside. Just ahead, there's a storage hatch in the sole, and in the top of the hatch is a pedestal base for the removable table. Fully forward, the wraparound bolsters start at 10 inches off the deck and top out at 19. The forward bolster is extended forward to form a seat that covers the aft part of the hatch over the ground tackle. 8-inch cleats are to both sides and notice how the rail height increases as we move forward. A turn and lock latch releases the hatch that opens on a gas support strut. There's a flip out bow roller, windlass and easy access to the road. The hatch is finished on the inside. As we get underway, the combination of those big outboards and the powerful bow thruster made for easy maneuvering. She's got a plumb bow that drops down to an extended keel and a twin stepped hull. During normal running, that plumb bow is well out of the water but in seas, that narrow entry should help carve through waves quite nicely. Now let's take a look at the numbers. The Axopar 37 Sun Top has a length overall of 36 feet 9 inches, a beam of 10 feet 10 inches, and a draft of 2 feet 9 inches. With an empty weight of 7,910 pounds, 30% fuel, 3 people, and test power, we estimated our test weight at 10,213 pounds. With twin Merc 350s turning 19 pitch 4 blade revolution props and spooled up to 6000 RPM, we reached a top speed of 57.1 miles per hour. Best cruise came in at 3500 RPM and 28.9 miles per hour. At that speed, the 17.9 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 1.6 miles per gallon in a range of 280 miles, all while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 192 gallon total fuel capacity. We should point out that a miles per hour gallon number of 1.6 is noteworthy and is made possible by her lightweight, narrow hull and double stepped bottom. In acceleration tests, the 37ST reached planing speed in 4.9 seconds, continued through 20 miles per hour in 5.9 and 30 came and went in 8.6 seconds. We really didn't have the sea conditions we'd hoped for to test her Category B offshore rating and that's unfortunate since our previous test on the 28 cabin showed some awesome capabilities. You should look for it. As for this, we had to be content with just gentle skipping across some light chop with the 37 remaining comfortable throughout. And even in these conditions, it's clear to see that she had excellent maneuverability throughout. One thing we did notice is that she turns really well with no hint of ventilating the props. Go ahead and pour on the power, it just serves to tighten the turn as she heals over. Back at the dock, she has nice maneuverability and I was able to easily walk her sideways and lay her gently against the dock. 
and then it's an easy step to access the midship cleat. The Axopar 37 ST is an unusual design that definitely catches attention. While her looks are different, so is her quality and design style. Axopar makes a good balance between adding features and available space and it works nicely. She's among the best handling boats I've tested and that says a lot. Bottom line, this boat offers a lot that isn't immediately apparent, but becomes so once you step aboard. And that's my full features walkthrough and performance evaluation of the 37 ST from Axopar. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.